Ever wonder why so many new coaches are still juggling a second job, or maybe you're trying to get this coaching business running, but somehow having a full-time job just doesn't make it easy. If that is you, today we're going to talk about a topic that not many coaches are talking about, and I'm going to give you some truth about how to build your coaching business while working a full-time job. to me, I'm Michelle, and I help female life coaches simplify their marketing so that they can get seen, get heard, and get paying clients. Today, we are going to talk about a topic that doesn't get enough attention, and that is the reality of needing a second job or having keeping the second job or, or, or keeping the full-time job while you're in the early stages of building your coaching business. So back in 2019, when I first started out as a life coach, I remember I was juggling between a full-time position while trying to get this business off the ground. And it was not easy because my schedule was really tight. I was working full-time and my hours are long. I have a background in healthcare and I worked for the last 20 years as a clinical pharmacist. And that job is really intense and high pressure. So a lot of time I don't have the time to actually go out and attend networking event or reaching out to potential client via DM because those tasks actually consume a lot of time. When you're in that relationship building uh, business, which is coaching is really a relationship building business and you need the trust, you need to have your prospect to actually like you, know you in order to get them to feel comfortable enough actually coming up to a discovery call. And while while it's nice to have a vision, to have this desire of wanting a coaching business that would replace my full-time income, that process was really tough. And I know this is a topic that not a whole lot of coaches are talking about and it doesn't get enough attention. And so you hear all the time, well, build a full-time coaching business is easy or getting that first 5K and 10K clients is easy, which is completely untrue. Perhaps you have some audience and perhaps you have a background that allows you to not putting a whole lot of effort in terms of connecting or networking and building that audience. Unless you're someone who already had that audience, then if you're starting out from scratch, it's really challenging and difficult and it takes some time to actually build up the trust with your audience, which is why a lot of times it, it makes me really nervous when I hear coaches wanting to quit their full-time job and because they started this full-time coaching business and they're trying to get it off the ground starting from scratch. So today we're going to talk about some of the key element in terms of what do I see in this industry as a newbie coach building your business starting from scratch and what are some of the ways that you can actually make this work and of course I'm going to share um, some of the insights that I have learned from my own journey and how I made it work while working a full-time job. So key number one is you have to realize there's going to be an income gap. Building a full-time coaching business takes time. No matter how big your network is, no matter how many people you have in your inner circle who's constantly looking for a coach, which is not true, right? Because you do need to have that relationship with them in order to build that bond so for them to actually see the need of working with you as a coach. And most of us, our inner circle are quite small. Those that we can trust, those that we know, sometimes not everyone are going to be interested to hear that, hey, um, if this is something that you're working on, please come in and let's have a discovery call. So it makes it really hard to actually go into your inner circle. And some of us just don't feel comfortable about pitching to our friends and family. So how do you make it work? Um, so in other words, Initially, when you first started out that first year, or maybe even, it might even take longer if you have a smaller circle, 
a lot of coaches don't have that enough consistent income that comes in for the first year. So you're going to experience this income gap that initially in that first couple of months, at least six months or up to a year. And the, the thing is, the bill doesn't stop. You still have the bills coming in every month, even though you're building this passion project on the side. So technically, what you would like to do is actually have a second job or a second part-time job or whatever it is that you choose. It could be something that's related to the experience that you have as a coach. Maybe it's a done for you type kind of, kind of deal. But you need to have a second consistent income that com comes in every single month so that you know that the foundation of what you have to, your, all your expenses will be taken care of because the bill doesn't stop coming. And as you're building up, you're probably going to need some more subscriptions and things that you may not have expected. Those also need to be uh, budgeted in because they're your monthly expenses that's going to increase. So do you expect that key number one as you're building a full-time coaching business starting from scratch is it's really important to realize that there's going to be an income gap, especially within that first year. The second key is you're investing in your business. So investment include some of the training session that you're going to enroll yourself in, the certification that you're going to go through, as well as um, having the need to work with someone, hire a coach or a business coach or a marketing coach to help you to grow that coaching business, giving you the skill, giving the tool that you need so that you can build it as you go. And that is part of your investment to your business, right? So having a second job or a job or consistent income that comes in, a stream of income that comes in to support that is going to be crucial for the growth of your business. Key number three, this is kind of tied into that first key, right? The income gap. Key number three is the slow growth of client acquisition. Um, this is kind of tied into that first key point, the income gap. As you're building up your business in the first year, there's going to be slow progress. People, especially if you're starting from scratch and, and you don't have a large audience, which I only had 200 when I first started out on both my Instagram account and on my Facebook account. And I remember they were all my friends and colleagues from work. And well, some are very empathetic and about like, oh, you're starting a business and, and what is it about, right? So some are more empathetic and others kind of just don't want to hear about it. And they're also afraid. Not only was I hesitating to share my business with them and because of the work environment and also because I hesitated to share what I do with them, I had no clue what I was doing. And so that hesitation had also slowed down the growth of your audience and also client acquisition. Now, taking it into online, when you're building that online presence, when you're doing work and when you're building that initial no like trust, that takes time to build, which is why a lot of time I tell all my clients that you might not have an idea of what that niche or what specialty you want to go to, but what you want to do is you want to start building your audience because that growth of the client acquisition takes time and takes, it's very slow to build it up. Taking someone from a stranger to someone who's actually see the need of hiring you, that takes some time to build. You need to have earn their trust first, and then they'll know you, they'll like the stuff that you're sharing. And finally, when they do see a need, then they'll actually go ahead and book a call with you. That process may take months, weeks, years to actually build. I have clients who reach out after years of following me and finally say, I'm ready to work with you. So you have to um, take into account that not only there's going Going to be in an income gap initially when that first year, but there's also this whole client acquisition is also going to take some time to evolve. So you're not going to be able to wake up in the morning and say, you know what, today I'm going to start posting on social and tomorrow I'm going to get client. It doesn't work that way. So the sooner that you get yourself out there, the better off you are because your social media content that also counts as networking and relationship building. And that trust 
actually take some time to build. Which brings us to the last key point about building a full-time coaching business and having a full-time job, which is burnout. Right. As you're building that client acquisition period and going through that income gap, not a whole lot of income is going to come in. So hopefully you have some security, you have some safety net that you can fall back on. That process is going to require time. And because of the income that's not coming in right through your coaching business, the pressure become higher and higher as every single day you're creating content, you're putting yourself out there, and you might not see any of the bankable result immediately. What's going to happen is a lot of us actually run into that situation where we feel burnt out, we feel overwhelmed. How do you actually build this coaching business, having a second job, having a full-time job, while hoping to take this off the ground. Here are some of the things that I have done and also that have worked for many of my clients. What you want to do is number one is don't quit your job. <laughs> it's really simple. If really the job is sucking your soul out and you are just completely done with it and somehow either you got laid off or you got let go, or you retire, then that's not by choice, right? It's not by choice that you end up not having a job. But if you do have a choice, choose a job that you would just have that consistent flow of income coming in every month to cover all the bills and expenses that, expenses that you're going to need to build this coaching business. So keep the job, and having that monthly consistent income comes in so that you can continue to build your dream, build your passion. So that's key number one. If you have a choice, keep the job. If you don't have a choice, then what you want to do is you want to look at your budgeting, your spending habit, right? Some of the money, some of the subscription fee that, that we subscribe to, we end up not using them. So make yourself a list. And, and this is something that I do for myself on a monthly basis. I go back to all my uh, expenses and look at what are some of the things that I don't really need, but somehow I'm still paying for them. And if those are really not helping you and not supporting you at the moment, current stage of your life, then perhaps you, we can let that go, right? So I do this on a monthly basis because there are bills that comes in that I don't even remember that I subscribe to them. And those are the type of spending expenses that you can actually use to pay for your calendar, to pay for other expenses that you might need. The third way that you can make this work is you want to sit down and do your number. And it's probably a good idea to actually have six months of saving before you jump into investing more things or buying more, more training. Do your numbers and make sure that you budget for your saving for at least six months in order for this to work. Right? You build your coaching business and, and in order to get that client acquisition, you're probably going to take about three to six months to support someone to actually get to know you. If you have that time and we're talking about like you're building that relationship with them, that would probably take about three months to six months to anywhere in that period of time in order to get your first client, the second clients to start to come in. So you definitely wanted to do your number. How much is it do you need? So let's say you are getting paid um, on a biweekly basis and each week you bring home, um, I don't know, $2,000, for example. If you bring home $2,000 and you're looking at all your expenses, you probably want to bring home another, what, $3,000, $2,000 in order to not only just to cover your current expenses, but also feel like, you're living comfortably that you can replace that income. So you gotta do your numbers and figure out what is that additional source that I need in order to not just to replace my income, but actually I feel I have some type of safety net. And that's also going to help you to decide how much do you charge um, for your coaching package. And if you're charging, if you're undercharging your, your, your client, then you're not even able to actually cover your basic expenses. And so what's the point of, of being a coach, right? So you definitely want to do your numbers so you have an idea of how to charge, what to charge, and also allowing yourself to get paid. 
So that's key number three of how you can build this a full time with a full time job. Last one is you probably can do some freelance job.、Um, so some of us have skills that we never thought that would be possible that someone else is my knee.、Um, so I have a coach friend who is great with organization, very tech savvy, and so she decided right her freelance job is becoming a virtual assistant, which is something that she does she does well, and it's a skill that she has that. Others are willing to pay for that skill. So think about some of the skills that you may have, but you might not have thought about turning it and monetizing it. So that would be another way that you can bring a, your supportive income into your coaching business, into your business, and while you are still working to get this off the ground. Now I'm going to tell you that personally, what I have done was because I was so good about not taking time off, not having any vacation. I didn't have I have a lot of sick day because I never called in sick. And so during that first year of building my full time coaching business, was I got really smart because I don't take vacation. So. I schedule myself some of those PTO days so that I can be off from that work and being able to build my coaching business dream, and so that's how I made it work. I use my vacation time, so instead of going somewhere for two weeks, I use my vacation time so that I can build my dream empire. And so, hopefully, by me sharing this story, you might be able to think about how you want to make this full-time coaching business work while you're transitioning out from other full-time job or you retire. How do you actually build this from ground up, from scratch? So, let me know in the comment down below. Are you? Working a full time job? Are you doing a per diem? Are you freelancing? How are you making this coaching business work? And where are you on that journey? And if you have any tips, your resources that you would like to share with the audience, please be sure to put it into the comment down below so that we can share with more. People and helping each other grow our business. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn the notification on so that you don't miss my upcoming episode. I will see you on the next video.